Hello, welcome. You're watching Focus On, and I'm Kenneth Ibomo. On this episode, all roads lead to the Netherlands, where African leaders are making a call for the world to double down on climate adaptation. After the breakthrough achievements of COP26 in Glasgow, there is a need to get a clear roadmap on how the commitments made will be delivered. The venue was Rotterdam, a port city in the Dutch province of South Holland. The event, the Africa Adaptation Summit, hosted by the Global Centre on Adaptation on its floating headquarters in the Rotterdam Harbour. With an objective to scale up adaptation action in Africa in the build-up to Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt for the United Nations World Climate Conference COP27. The plan, the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. Yeah, so this is a breakthrough for Africa. It's up or down for Africa today here in Europe, in fact, in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam. Why is that important? Because Africa is on the brink of a climate emergency. I mean, we've seen the floods and the droughts uh, here in Europe. We've seen the floods in, in Pakistan. But nine out of the ten most vulnerable countries to climate change are in Africa, a continent which did not cause this climate crisis. African leaders are coming here today with very strong expectations. They want to see ambition of the Western world going up, but they also they want to see finance flowing into Africa. They're not coming empty-handed. They come with an investment plan. Africa knows what it wants. Africa knows what it needs. Now the Western world needs to partner with African leaders to come with very concrete results when they fly back tonight. What we want is that there are concrete outcomes which will help the smallholder farmer in Western Kenya, which will help the urban city dweller in Accra in Ghana. We think there is the time now for concrete action. Leaders need to come, they need to commit, but they need to be extremely practical. Solutions in agriculture do exist. For example, digital technologies for smallholder farmers. But what they need? They need scale. Solutions exist to develop the urban cities so that's flood prone. It needs to be rapidly implemented. So today is basically a matchmaking of African leaders, civil society, the private sector, universities, global leaders from the, from the north. And this coalition today needs to deliver for Africa. It is very clear that uh, adaptation is critical for the economies and most importantly for people. And Africa that has done nothing to create the problem of climate change is already suffering its severe consequences. All of us here have an obligation to be concrete in our commitments to Africa. We at the IMF have placed adaptation in Africa at the heart of how we think about supporting resilience in the continent and good development. Uh, this is why a summit like this is so important, for leaders from Africa to speak up. Promises have been made, 100 billion a year for the developing world, and uh, we are still seeing that promise not quite met. It has to be met. A promise is made to double funding for adaptation. This promise has to be met. I speak on behalf of my institution. Promises we make, we keep, and that has to be for everyone. Well, I think this meeting is very timely, and uh, what we need really is to push the agenda of adaptation that had been ignored for years. And I take um, uh, the measures of finance coming from the development finance institutions. You can really see that the share of adaptation in many cases didn't exceed 15 to 20 percent of total finance to climate action. This means that uh, mitigation has taken bigger share. What we hope is to see more uh, investments by the private sector on the mitigation uh, front, more, more investments in renewables and the likes. And then what we need to see is more investments um, and grants and support for uh, adaptation. The figures that we have now for Africa are very um, uh, poor relative to the huge demands. Some of the countries spend as much as 5% uh, of their GDP on adaptation. This is more than 15 to 20% of their GDPs. The more vulnerable countries may require up to 20% of their GDP. This means that 60% of their budget need to be spent on uh, adaptation activities. So th that requires really lots of attention by the development 
investment finance uh, community. Um, only 3% of the total uh, uh, funding to adaptation is coming from the private sector. Um, um, what's really alarming that uh, uh, there is a big share of uh, commercial borrowing for adaptation and this is not fair. For the African continent, I issues related to adaptation may um, um, reflect uh, simply that the continent has to adapt to a problem that it didn't really contribute uh, into. Uh, as, as you know, 3 to 4 percent of total emissions are coming from the continent and you need to spend, in many cases, from 20 percent of your budget to 60 percent of your budget on adaptation. That needs to be fixed and I hope that we can get adequate answers to that today. Yeah, because this year is very, a very crucial year when you talk about um, Africa's climate agenda uh, and that very crucial meeting that's going to happen in your country as well. And I'd like you to speak uh, to Africa's top priorities going into the Sharm El Sheikh. Right. I think uh, the issue of climate action needs to be put within a holistic uh, framework. It's important really to deal with issues related to mitigation, to adaptation, to the loss and damage, and to mobilize finance. But at the same time, we shouldn't be forgetting that sustainable development at large in Africa had been derailed for many years, and that had been compounded because of the recent uh, shocks, including the Ukraine crisis and before that, the COVID crisis. So what we need to, uh, to put for the ordinary people in the street in Africa, what, uh, when they ask what's in it for us, all of these summits related to climate. They have to address the main acute problems facing the continent, the food crisis that we are facing, the energy crisis, and um, uh, what we need to, to deal with uh, through better funding, not to accumulate more debts on the burden of Africans, especially for problems that they were not really behind. Uh, so we'll see uh, how that will go in the discussions today. We are after some practical solutions and good implementation of, me of measures going forward. As the conversations on the day took shape, key stakeholders engaged the media on the progress and scope of the engagements at the Africa Adaptation Summit. This empties the pockets of the world's poorest and most vulnerable group of people. Enough is enough. Africa and the international community need an opportunity to confront this crisis together. Fortunately, with the COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh of Sheikh, Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt is going to be held in November this year. What we have heard today from the African leaders and European and many other leaders, the heads of state, the mayors, the world of business and the community leaders is that adaptation is an opportunity for growth, prosperity, to the business for a greener and more resilient future. But we have also heard that unless the African Cup November this year, it takes us a step forward on adaptation action, we will miss the critical opportunity. We cannot squander uh, this moment when we are all living in a climate uh, emergency. And the key deliverables that has been outlined by for COP27 is to show that the doubling on adaptation finance is happening and that is flowing into real country-led program. And the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program, or AAAP, is Africa's flagship adaptation program. It needs $250 million in additional funding for its vital upstream financing programs. And it needs $12.5 billion in funding via the African Development Bank's new climate window for Africa. I, I can tell that total amount of this um, 
triple AP is a $25 billion where half of that cost of $12.5 billion will be shared by burdened by the African Development Bank. I think it is entirely possible for the key players to come together behind this for COP27. Certainly, today's summit had clarified the ask, and it has taken us further in terms of the path we need to take between now and Sham el Sheikh to ensure results that truly meet Africa's expectations. We have a duty to meet Africa's expectations at the African Cup. But fulfilling that duty is also a huge opportunity for us all. This is a smart growth agenda. Working with Africa for greater resilience will deliver results for the world. I am deeply grateful and quite touched and also satisfied with what all these leaders have been promising their action to make sure that uh, not only Africa, but all throughout the world, we can really realize a better world for our future. We have a choice to make, delay or pay, or plan and prosper. I think this is a smart thing to do. Africa has an adaptation finance gap of 41 billions US dollars every year to a problem it did not cause. What it needs now is adaptation finance to flow to African-led projects on the ground so that the people, the cities, and the nations of Africa can weather the storm they face. We must. There is one headline coming out of the summit, which is this. We must double down on climate finance adaptation for Africa at COP27. Double down. It was promised in Glasgow. It has to be delivered two months from now. Well, you might ask, how can this be done? It's obvious because Africa has a program for climate adaptation for the continent. It is the so-called triple AP. Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. This triple AP, this Africa Adaptation Program, is unmatched in ambition. It's unmatched in scale globally. And it has already proven its delivery potential. Since launching last year, President Adeshina and I launched this last year, it has already been funding some 30 projects in 19 countries for over 3 billion US dollars. So this can be done, but what needs to happen, it now needs to be capitalized. And I'm sure you will hear from the leaders here today, who you may already have spoken to before, but also afterwards, their affirmations that Africa is behind this African Adaptation Acceleration Program including its upstream financing facility, which is the transmission belt to deliver on the program, and the African Development Fund, which is hosted by President Adeshina at the African Development Bank. The upstream financing facility, which we host as Global Center on Adaptation, is mere uh, 250 million US dollars over five years. Can that be delivered by COP27? In fact, it should be delivered by COP27. Because what is more, by delivering on the triple AP, the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program, we can set in motion a resilient transformation across Africa. Because let us not forget, the agenda which we are discussing today is about jobs, is about growth, is about development, Africa and the world has a choice to make. We either delay and pay or plan and prosper, because for Africa it is adapt or die. If you look at Africa, how much we are losing and how much we might lose, let me put it not in figures, let me just put it this way. We are stressed, we are stressed, we are stressed but we do not want to be in distress. 
And that's why this conversation we are having here, it's about that, how to avoid that distress. Together with the Global Center on Adaptation, we have this African Adaptation Acceleration Program that is going to look in how to build climate resilience for infrastructure, for water, for sanitation, for energy, but also looking at how we also bring climate smart agriculture for farmers so that they can actually exist a lot. And this is the largest ever globally effort on adaptation. So it's, it's, it's something, but we need the money the African Development Bank put down $12.5 billion out of $25 billion. So we are, not, we are not begging, right? We are saying that we didn't cause the problem. We come to the conversation with very good heart, a very great commitment. Meet us halfway. This is $12.5 billion. Then we need $12.5 billion. And yet the developed countries are promised $100 billion a year. In fact, from Glasgow, that they will double that. Uh, for adaptation, you know, by 2025. So this is the moment to deliver for Africa. I was just talking to Alok Sharma, the COP26 president, just before coming to this COP, uh, conference. And I said, from Glasgow, we have a plane. We had a plane on climate adaptation flying from Glasgow that has to land in Sharm el-Sheikh. When it lands in Sharm el-Sheikh, it must deliver the goods. And the goods it must deliver is financing for Africa. It's totally non negotiable. Because it's Africa's cup, the needs of Africa must be met. And that's why the leaders are here today. And that's the practicality of what we are talking about. We want to avoid a distress in Africa. That's why we are here in Rotterdam today. And I'm pleased to say that we've heard some very positive signals from our partners today. We've had discussions behind closed doors, and we are here to find out what the developed world is prepared to do to help us. Dans le financement de l'adaptation pour l'Afrique. Puisque au mois de novembre, nous serons en Égypte, à Sharm el Sheikh, pour la COP27. It is needed. And as we are meeting up in November in Sharm el Sheikh, it is important that we have a clear vision of what will be done, what can be done. We want to make things very clear. Africa has already got an adaptation program for the continent. It is called the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. It represents $25 billion milliards de dollars sur cinq années. Ce programme est... This is Africa's flagship undertaking. It is Africa who designed and owns and lead it. The African Union is fully behind this AAAP. De l'accélération de l'adaptation en Afrique. Donc le a So this AAAP is a vehicle that will enable to implement the Africa Adaptation Initiative. The support that we get behind the AAP, or that we don't get today, will be determinant to decide whether we can implement those plans all across Africa. L'accélération de l'adaptation en Afrique. Donc Rotterdam sera un test pour Charmel Cher. Qu'on va encore partir pour faire du blabla. So Rotterdam will be like a test. Either we keep on talking and talking or we are able to mobilize those 250 million over five years. Au moins pourra être mobilisé, ce qui permettra d'avoir l'espoir quant à la suite de la COP27. I'm hopeful that some countries will make commitments later on and will continue some meetings behind closed doors. 55 million dollars in new contributions was made from the United Kingdom, Norway, France and Denmark for the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program's upstream financing facility. And with a leverage ratio of 1 to 100, this is expected to influence over 5 billion in climate adaptation investments across Africa.
And it brings us to the end of this episode of Focus On as we await more action from global partners. We will be keeping a keen eye on developments leading to COP27. I'm Kenneth Ibomo. Thank you for watching.